A huge hole in Earth's protective ozone layer opened up a few weeks ago, exposing humans to dangerous levels of the sun's ultraviolet radiation. Here are the details. New Scientist reports that one of the largest holes to ever form in Earth's protective ozone layer is finally closing. The NASA Earth Observatory reported that the 2021 Antarctic ozone hole reached its maximum size on October 7th and ranks as the 13th largest since 1979, exposing an area bigger than Antarctica. 2020 also saw a similarly oversized hole form for the same reasons when a colder than usual winter in the southern hemisphere fed a deep and larger than average hole that persisted for a longer period than usual. The hole is actually the thinning of the ozone layer in the stratosphere above Antarctica. Chemically active forms of chlorine and bromine, derived from human-made compounds, are released into the stratosphere during reactions on high-altitude polar clouds. The reactive chlorine and bromine then spark ozone-destroying reactions when sunlight hits the Antarctic at the end of its winter. The hole would often force southern countries like New Zealand to issue ultraviolet radiation warnings in the middle of their summer months. Scientists predicted that the hole would finally close last week, despite the surprisingly big size of the hole in 2020 and 2021. Scientists still believe that the hole will finally stop forming by the middle of the century. It turns out, meteors and volcano eruptions are not the only things that can cause mass extinction events. Ozone depletion may have triggered a mass die-off of ancient fish and plants by ultraviolet ray exposure 358 million years ago, according to a new study in Science Advances. Science Magazine reports the research team took a quote, perfect six-meter-long mudstone drilled core. Preserved in the sample were spores from land plants that had flourished in the Devonian period, when Greenland was part of the old redstone continent. According to the study, the fossilized spores showed a transition from healthy, normal spores to malformed and blackened spores. The deformities observed strongly suggest the parent plant suffered DNA damage from high levels of ultraviolet B rays. The spores dated to the late Devonian die-off, the second mass extinction in the period that saw the disappearance of many species, including giant armored sharks. The descendants of the surviving bony fish and sharks would populate today's oceans. Importantly, the second wave extinction wiped out the first four-limbed fish that had ventured onto land. This means another group of five-toed tetrapods became the precursor of land animals. Rising temperatures are speculated to be the cause for ozone depletion and resulting UV rays, as the climate was warming toward the end of the Devonian age. Science magazine reports warmer seas caused plankton and algae blooms that would have secreted ozone-destroying salts. When we change our behavior for the better, the climate responds positively. Here's the latest proof. If the world hadn't banned the chemicals that destroy the ozone layer with the 1987 Montreal Protocol, climate change would have significantly worsened global warming by the 2040s, according to a new study in the journal Nature. The study found that a continued increase in chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, would have caused the ozone layer to collapse worldwide, which in turn would have led to a rise in ultraviolet radiation showering down on plants and animals. Without the agreement, the study states the tropics would have lost 60% of their ozone coverage by 2100, with mass exposure to unfiltered radiation damaging plant tissues, dramatically stunting their growth and limiting their ability to photosynthesize. According to Science Alert, a hole of that size would be even larger than the one that formed over Antarctica in the early 1980s, with the ultimate effect being that by 2100, damaged forests, soils, and other vegetation would not have been able to absorb a total of 580 billion tons of carbon dioxide. This would make the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere 40 to 50 percent higher. That increase alone would cause global temperatures to rise by 0.8 degrees Celsius or 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the CFCs themselves are also greenhouse gases, and they would have caused an additional 1.7 degrees Celsius or 3 percent Fahrenheit of global warming by 2100. The total contribution to global warming increases that have been avoided through global commitment to the Montreal Protocol then is 2.5 degrees Celsius or 4.5 degrees Fahrenheit, according to the study. 
This sentiment matches the sentiment in the recent report by the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. In five previous reports, the world was on track for the hottest scenario, likely to involve temperatures 3.3 to 5.7 degrees Celsius higher than pre-industrial levels by the end of the century. However, this time it is on track for a position between the next two scenarios down, with temperature increases between 2.1 and 4.6 degrees Celsius because of recent progress to combat climate change, according to one report co-author who spoke to the Associated Press. The problem then is not the planet. It responds accordingly when we change our inputs. Rather, as the seawater rises and the ice melts, the problem is us and our continued reliance on fossil fuels. Throughout this 3,000 plus pages in the UN's recent report, it's clear that both the existing circumstances it describes and the future scenarios it sets out are caused by human activity, outlining how greenhouse gas emissions far outweigh natural contributions to global warming. Temperatures have warmed 1.1 degrees Celsius since we started burning fossil fuels on a large scale in the late 1800s, and the UN report explains that this is historically extraordinary, noting that around 125,000 years ago was the next most recent candidate for a period of higher temperature, which was caused by orbital variations. Such clear and unequivocal causation, though, is actually kind of a blessing, because it means that the situation is in our hands. Several recent studies have found that we would find it extremely difficult to stop an asteroid hitting Earth even if we knew it was coming, and even if we had a 10-year warning. The plans for saving us are not yet all that convincing. But climate change seems theoretically much simpler. The UN report ultimately concludes that we can limit humid-induced global warming by limiting cumulative carbon dioxide emissions and reaching at least net zero carbon dioxide emissions, along with making strong reductions in other greenhouse gas emissions just like we successfully did with the Montreal Protocol and its limits on CFCs. Of course, disastrous temperature rises above 1.5 degrees Celsius are likely already locked in, and with them, sea level rises of 15 to 30 centimeters or 6 to 12 inches by 2050, according to co-author Bob Kopp of Rutgers University, who spoke to the Associated Press. But it seems clear from the sentiment of UN climate scientists that the only worthwhile way of thinking is to consider that there are still things we can do to end up in the better climate scenarios rather than the worse ones. Our only other alternatives, either complete denial or nihilistic pessimism, are far more irrational options, and we can already see they lead nowhere good. Two weeks ago, The Guardian reported that climate scientists have detected warning signs of the collapse of the Gulf Stream, one of the planet's main potential tipping points. The research found an almost complete loss of stability over the last century of the currents that researchers call the Atlantic Meridiono Overturning Circulation, or AMOC. The currents are already at their slowest point in at least 1,600 years. But the new analysis shows they may be nearing a shutdown. Such an event would have catastrophic consequences around the world, severely disrupting the rains that billions of people depend on for food in India, South America, and West Africa, while increasing storms and lowering temperatures in Europe. The AMOC is driven by dense, salty seawater sinking into the Arctic Ocean, but the melting of fresh water from Greenland's ice sheet is slowing the process down earlier than climate models suggested. The analysis was based on fingerprints the AMOC leaves in surface temperature and salinity patterns. It showed a critical threshold is being reached beyond which the system may collapse. UN Climate Report co-author Kopp and others have called this worst-case scenario unlikely this century. But the point is this, why play with fire when we don't have to? Scientists have looked at data from weather balloons since 1980 and calculated that the Earth's troposphere is expanding like a balloon. Here are the details. Scientists recently published a study in the journal Science Advances showing that the lowest part of Earth's atmosphere, called the troposphere, is expanding at an increasing rate. The troposphere stretches from sea level up to around 7 kilometers high at the poles and up to around 20 kilometers at the equator. It is the layer that contains most of the atmosphere's moisture and heat, so it is where most of Earth's weather is formed. The researchers say the data shows that this layer has been expanding by 50 meters per decade between 1980 and 2000. However, since 2000, the rate has increased to 53.3 meters per decade. They say the expansion is mainly being caused by global warming, but another contributing factor is the shrinking of the stratosphere, which is the layer above the troposphere. The stratosphere shrank due to new technologies releasing ozone-depleting gases into the air, which in turn depleted the stratosphere, which in turn caused the troposphere to expand. Global legislation managed to limit the release of these gases, but their remnants still affect the stratosphere. 
The researchers noted the study captures two important ways that humans are changing the atmosphere. The height of the tropopause is being increasingly affected by emissions of greenhouse gases, even as society has successfully stabilized conditions in the stratosphere by restricting ozone-destroying chemicals. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.